Okay, great. So in this video, we're going to look at inside the studio. So after you've scheduled your broadcast or you've said you want to go live, you jump into your StreamYard studio and set it up how you want it to be set up. So I'm going to show you how to do that just now. So let's just quickly share my screen. Let's go over to StreamYard. So once you've scheduled a broadcast, it will be here as scheduled. So you want to go ahead and enter broadcast studio. This is going to enter the studio as if you're going to go live, but you're not actually going to go live right now. This is where you can do some of the setting up of your equipment. So first thing you want to do is check your microphone and camera. So my camera at the moment is set on my webcam. You do have obviously your computer camera, so you could have that. And it's always in best to do it in high definition. Obviously, if your internet is not very strong, then you could do it in standard definition. But if you can have a strong enough internet, then I would go for high definition. Audio, again, you can choose which mic you want to use. I've got the snowball. The speaker, I'm just using my normal speakers off my computer. You can test them. So you can test the speaker. And you can obviously you'll hear the noise you can test your um, microphone testing testing if you have a green screen you can um, go ahead and link it up there but I don't have one at the moment so just your camera and your audio so once that's set up you can click OK you can put your name and then you click your enter broadcast so when you enter you are presented with this setup now this setup presents quite a few options so we're just going to run through those first this is where your this black area here is actually where your stream needs to go and as you can see you're not part of the stream click to add your audio or video so just click and you are there now your video your audio will come with you and you won't be able to have two on unless you've invited them and to invite them you can get the link from down here where you click invite and then you copy that to your clipboard and you can send it via email or you can copy it and pop it into perhaps Messenger or WhatsApp. Once that guest is here, there is a waiting room for them and we will do one of these videos. I will try and find um, somebody who will be willing to let me call them at the same time and I can record it at the same time. So then you'll have your guest here. If you have your screen, your share your screen, you have to click this button click share screen and then you can either choose the entire screen the application window or the tab that you're using inside of um, the Google so if I if I choose that one I can share the zoom and then I as you can see it's sharing it up there once you've added the screen here on this bit here you can actually remove from the screen without actually removing the tab so as you can see, you can you can juggle between the two. So these sorts of things will come into more of a true life once you are with either sharing your screen or you have a guest. Down here, you can mute your microphone. You can stop your camera temporarily. You can recheck your cam and your mic in case there's a problem. So you can do that inside here as well. You could obviously invite people and you can leave your studio. If you are having issues, you can actually send them a report. They're very good at answering any queries. Over here on the right, we have the edit button. This enables you to edit your live stream titles and thumbnail before you go up. You can delete your, your stream will be deleted after 10 minutes post start time if you haven't started your live already. As you can see up here, it says scheduled, the date that you're scheduled to go, this um, shows that you're not going live automatically. You need to click go live and then I count to two. And by that time, usually it says live video is up and ready. Over here on the right, the comments tab here, this shows you the comments for the area that you're streaming into. Now, if you are multi-streaming, say you're going to your Facebook page and your Facebook group, it will show the comments from your page with the profile picture and the name. If, however, the member of your group who is joining you and commenting hasn't clicked the authorization via StreamYard, you won't see their name or their profile picture. You'll just see the comment. On your page, it's always visible. In a group, they have to give permission. When you stream, when you schedule in a group, you will see that 
StreamYard puts that link in as well. Sometimes it's better to put it into the comments as well. Um, when you are multi-streaming, say like you're going to YouTube and Facebook, down here you will have the option to see your um, posts separately. So either the YouTube post or the, the Facebook post, so you can see where people are coming from. Now this is where we get into the juicy bit. Let's go to the brand first. Brand is where you can add your brand. So up here you've got one brand. If you're going to stream under a different brand, you can add the second brand. These three little dots here give you the option to rename your brand or delete your brand. Your brand colors, obviously you can have, this is your, your main focal color and that can be done from your hex code. You can have two types of themes, the default or the minimal. Logo, if you're on the free one, you will have the StreamYard logo, but if you are on a paid version, you can actually hide that. And then you can upload your own logos and depending on which ones you want to show, will depend on where it goes. I think it stays in the top right hand corner all the time. You can't move it around, but you can, however, upload what's known as an overlay. So this overlay is a custom graphic that you can have on top. It's like lays on top of your, of your screen and you can create it in Canva. I will show you how to do that. You do have to have a paid option in Canva because you need to, to download it with a transparent background. So the bits that you don't want to be seen by anyone need to be transparent so that you can be seen through them. So you can come standard with the live stream here. You can add your own. I've built these all in Canva. So these can sit there over the top of you while you're talking. If you want a video, we can have some videos so you can actually show. You can show a video um, up to 30 seconds before or any point during your live. Now what that does is that sometimes if you have a weekly show or you have an intro that you would like to have up beforehand, you can pop that on. That works really well for YouTube. Perhaps if you're going live on YouTube, you could have your pre-show saying who you are, that you need to subscribe, that you need to ring the bell for notifications, et cetera, et cetera. And then you come in with your live. That's a really good way of starting up like a normal uploaded video. You can create those. I use wave.video to create those. And I can give you a lesson in that as well. Background is like a, back, a black background when you are sharing your screen. So if I was to put my screen up here, you see how this background here is black. I could upload a different colored one and it would just be um, created in Canva as well. And, and it says here, backgrounds are just like overlays except they sit behind your stream. So recommended again is 1,280 by 720. Maximum file size is 10 megabytes. You can have three megabytes if it's a GIF. So you can have a GIF, like a moving background as well if you want to. So you could have your logo rotating if you really wanted to. And then underneath here, you can show your name or you can have it off depending on whether you want your name showing or not. And you can do that for your guests as well. So that's in the brand area. So going up to the banners area, this is where I, this is what I use as a, instead of having post-its now, I use this as a way of reminding me what I'm talking about. You can't move them around. So you have to put it in the order that you're going. But what you can do is you can create a banner. Now a banner can be created. Let me just delete some of these and then I can show you what I mean. So you're going to come in like this. They, there are some example bar banners, so we can just have a little look here. Um, let me see whether it can show. It doesn't really show anything. So add a banner, you press create, you just write down. So um, live stream with StreamYard. Let me back a little bit. I seem to be a little bit close to the camera. And you can have that showing just as a banner. So what happens is you can just show it as a banner across the front. You can, however, edit it and make it scroll along the bottom like a little ticker, which means that it will be along the bottom the whole time. So you have to show that. And as you see, it can just go along the bottom. That's really good for reinforcing your brand or your messaging, having it running along the bottom. If you're doing a video about a course you're releasing or a program, having the title down there, the more times people see it, the more it's going to sink into their heads and it's not very big. And when you add another banner, that sits on top. So here we can just put banner one. If I add that in and show it, it's going to sit above. 
So to hide the banner, you just click hide. To show the banner, you just click show and vice versa. So that's a really good way of, and you can get these prepared beforehand and you can see what they say. Every time you come into your studio after your previous live, your previous banners will be there. So you can just go through and edit them depending on what you want to say. So that's a really good thing as well. These are really, 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 really useful. Okay, you can have a private chat with other guests. So if you've got guests on, you can actually privately chat them. So if you want them, you might want to give them the heads up that you're going to be doing something. Perhaps they're the ones that are taking up the screen and you're sitting in the background. You can actually talk to them about what's going to happen next. You can go back to your settings. This will go back to the whole um, general. So as you can see, I've got mine ticked as sh um, shift video up for comments and banners. If you don't do that, what it means is that the comments and banners will come over you. Sometimes that affects when you're screen sharing. So I always have that ticked. Again, you can go into the camera, you can go into the audio, you can go into green screen and you can see your guests. When your guests come on, Guests can see viewers' comments, play a sound when guest enters. That's audio, that's visible to you, I think. Let me just see. Uh, plays a ding sound when a guest enters the studio. Useful if you won't be looking at your StreamYard tab when live. Okay, that's good. Guests must be authenticated. I, I thought, I thought, and oh, I can't say it. Anyway, you can read it there. Requires your guests to be approved for YouTube or Facebook. So this is like you can actually ban people from your studio. It's really for when people open the floor. So for instance, if I were to be live on my YouTube and I decided that I would want somebody to come on, I could have a look at them first. If there was a guest that was persistently annoying and persistently getting like not behaving properly and not speaking appropriately, you can actually ban those guests from coming back on again and you can ban that there. I think that's more for um, people who use this sort of software for the high level YouTube lives because you can have this, um, there's a thing on YouTube that you can have when you've got a certain amount of followers, you can ha like have a sponsored question link and it's like a super comment or something like that. So um, it's useful for that. So that's basically the studio setup inside of StreamYard. So it's quite easy to use. When people make a comment, you can write it here. You can actually write the comment as well and it gets posted by adding it in there and it will actually get posted to the stream that's waiting to go live. So if you've got any updates about your live or anything like that, you can put them on. You can actually show your comment on your screen by clicking it. So if somebody's asked you a question and you think it's really useful for the rest of your audience, you can show that question. People really like that because they can see themselves and, the, and you're giving their business name some publicity. So they really like that as well. You can hide it as well. So that's what happens inside the studio. And then when you want to go live, you just click that go live button. Okay, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to go live on my page. I've already scheduled this. What I'm going to do is I will show you the go live button when I actually um, show you how to pre-record using StreamYard. But all you have to do when you're here, you'll get a countdown. It will tell you exactly when it's ready. And then it will say show time. You click the go live button count to two in your head up here on the left it will say go live it will say you're live and it will show you how many people are on the live with you it's really really easy to use it's so much quicker than zoom for live streaming and i you know even if you're not going to use this full time i i, I really recommend that you have a little go at going live with it on your inside your page or inside your group any questions whatsoever about this video please do pop them into the digital lab facebook group and i'll answer them there Okay, see you soon. Bye for now.